Hey, Real Progressives, this is Jackie Lukman, and this has uh, been a difficult few days, and I was trying to get my head around my thoughts, but uh, something really moved me this morning as I was watching the uh, endless coverage of the carnage in Dallas. And um, the mayor of Dallas said something that uh, we hear a lot after these racially motivated um, incidences happen, whether they uh, whether the incident is what happened in uh, South Carolina or whether it's the racially motivated or racially tinged police shootings of unarmed and unaggressive black men and women. Somebody white always um, wants to intone the words of Dr. King and they always want to say, uh, well, you know, why can't we do what Dr. King said and judge each other by the content of our character and not the color of our skin. And it's amazing to me that uh, that's the only thing people ever remember Dr. Martin Luther King ever saying. Three years after Dr. Martin Luther King um, gave that incredible speech at the March on Washington in Washington, DC, he said this to Mike Wallace of 60 Minutes and I'm gonna read this to you. He said, well, I would say this, we don't have long. The mood of the Negro community now is one of urgency, one of saying that we aren't going to wait, that we've got to have our freedom. We've waited too long. So that I would say every summer, we're going to have this kind of vigorous protest. My hope is that it will be nonviolent. I would hope that we can avoid riots because riots are self-defeating and socially destructive. I would hope that we can avoid riots, but that we would be as militant and as determined next summer through the winter as we have been this summer. And I think the answer about how long it will take for us to get our freedom will depend on the federal government, on the city halls of our various cities and on white America to a large extent. This is where we are at this point. And I think white America will determine how long it will be and which way we go in the future. That is what Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. said to Mike Wallace on 60 Minutes in 1966 in an interview in which Mike Wallace was asking Dr. King what he thought about the riots that were occurring in predominantly black cities um, across that country in response to racist violence, much of which occurred uh, after a police incident. Those were Dr. King's words. Dr. Martin Luther King said that White America will determine how long it will be for the Negro, in his words, or black people to get justice and equality in this country and which way we go in the future. He said that in 1966. But the only thing a lot of white people and a lot of black people can remember about anything Dr. Martin Luther King ever said is, I dream for a day when my little children can be judged by the content of their character and not the color of their skin. Listen, all of the words of Dr. Martin Luther King are precious to many of us and they are prescient uh, and they need to be heeded. But please, progressives, especially white progressives, and, and white people in general, whether you're progressives or not, stop intoning half the legacy of Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. Because as we've seen in the incidences that have occurred uh, over the past several decades in regard to uh, racial violence that is directed at black and minority people when it comes from the agents of the state, um, there's a difference in, in response. You know, today, America is calling for either a, a vigorous call for reconciliation or, oh, you know, oh, why can't we all just do what Dr. King said? And, and listen, we need to love each other after 
nine police officers were, officers were tragically murdered. But when Dylan Roof murdered nine innocent people in Charleston, South, South Carolina, too many people wanted to wait to hear all of the details and Dylan Roof wasn't a racist. Nobody wanted reconciliation then. Everybody wanted black people to forgive. As a matter of fact, we were told we better forgive or else we weren't good Christians. We had to consider that that boy's family was going through a difficult time too. That's what the judge said at his sentencing, sentencing hearing to the families of the people he had just murdered. No one's telling the police officers in Dallas that they need to demand that they forgive the person who murdered their family members. No one's looking at this man who, who committed this atrocious act of violence against these police officers and saying, oh, he's a lone wolf and he's probably got mental issues. Oh, he, he's, a, he's a poor, lost, lonely, misguided soul. We're not talking about him the way we talked about Dylan Roof after Charleston, South Carolina. No, he is immediately a racist and a terrorist. Yes, he did say he wanted to kill white people. Dylan Roof also said he wanted to kill black people because he hated them. But still, a lot of America had a hard time calling him a racist and a terrorist. Still do. The time for America in general, and especially white people, to demand that black people teach them how not to be racist is done. The time for white America to demand that black people are loving and forgiving and kind and that we are the ones who have to take the first step toward reconciliation and we are the ones who have to show and prove that we don't hate you, That's that time is past. Because we've always been that people. We've always been the people who have been trying to prove that we're not the ones with the animosity here. So when we stand up and say our lives matter, black lives matter, we don't say that to the exception of everyone else's life. We say that because we've been treated as if our lives have never mattered in this country. And we say that hoping that Native Americans would come alongside us too because they've been treated the same. And Latinos would come alongside us too because they've been treated the same. But as usual, we get a lot of put pushback from a lot of different groups of people telling us that we're the ones who need to, who, who need to demonstrate how loving and kind and peaceful and Christian we are. And these very same people who tell us that we're the ones who have to prove our worthiness to be treated like human beings and Americans are the very same people who intone the words of Dr. Martin Luther King, but they intone the wrong ones. Yes, we all should be treated and looked at as human beings and, and, and judged by the content of our character and not the color of our skin. That's how it should be. Here's the reality though. That's not how it is. That's not how it ever was. And the fact that we are still having to say Black Lives Matter proves that we're still fighting for that. And three years after Dr. Martin Luther King said that he had a dream that one day his little children would be judged by the content of their character and not the color of their skin. Three years later, he realized that that wasn't happening. And not only did he realize it wasn't happening, he realized that the only people who had the power to change that were not his little children, but the people who actually had the power. 
the people who are actually in the majority, the people who were actually responsible for treating his children differently because of the color of their skin, and that's white America. Dr. Martin Luther King said in 1966 that the answer to how long it will take for black people and LGBTQ people and Latin Americans and Latinos, I'm sorry, and Native Americans and transgendered people and whomever else you want to put in that category of oppressed people, but we're talking about black people right now. Back in 1966, Dr. Martin Luther King said that the answer to how long it will take for black people to get justice and equality in this country depends upon the federal government. So all of you folks who say that we have no right to redress our government for our grievances, grievances, shut up. Yes, we do. He said that he believes that the answer lies in the city halls of our various cities. So those of you who say that we shouldn't be getting involved in local politics to uh, answer and redress some of our problems, shut up. Yes, we do. Yes, we should. And he said that he thinks the answer about how long it will take for black people to get justice and equality in this country depends on white America to a large extent. If you ever read Dr. Martin Luther King's letter from the Birmingham jail, he speaks at length about his great disappointments during his work with the civil rights movement. He had two great disappointments that are very striking to me and very dear to my heart and continue to pierce and crush my heart to this day because they are still very true. There are very present disappointments in the fight for racial justice and equality in this country. One of those disappointments of Martin Luther King was of the lack of support that he received from some black clergy members, from some black members of the Christian community. Still true today. We've still got black church members, black Christians who don't like Black Lives Matter because they're, res they're not respectable enough. Well, back in the day, a lot of black Christians didn't like the civil rights movement for the exact same reasons. Can we please dispel this myth that Martin Luther King and the civil rights movement was hugely popular during their time? They weren't. The other great disappointment that Martin Luther King had and expressed in his letter to the Birmingham jail was in the lack of support from white moderates, especially members of the clergy who were also white. He said that he thought that the lack of progress or the impediment to the progress of civil and equal rights and justice for black people in this country wasn't going to be uh, the, the fault of uh, white racists in, in Klan robes. He said, no, the greatest enemy to racial progress and justice in this country isn't the racist white person, but it's the silent white That is still true today. We are the only group of people in this country who have to continually explain that we can be pro-black and support everybody else. Nobody else has to do that but us. And if you don't believe anybody else, please believe me when I tell you that we're tired of explaining ourselves. We are tired of having to justify our existence we are tired of having to justify our right to be treated like human beings. We are tired of having to defend our right to exercise our rights as Americans. But the truth is that if white moderates, white progressives, white Christians, 
white Americans would stand up alongside us, we wouldn't have to do it because we would have been there already. I didn't say that Martin Luther King did in 1966. It is 2016. We are facing the same horrors. We are facing the same challenges. We are facing the same racism. And we will face the same horrors, challenges, and racism today in another 50 years, unless white moderates, white Christians, white progressives, white Americans stand up for your fellow man. Not begging you. I'm telling you, that's the only way it's going to work. This amazing movement that Bernie Sanders has sparked in this country captured my interest, captured my imagination and my support because I know his track record in regard to civil rights. It's really that simple for me. I know he's been fighting alongside us for us, being a champion for us for much of his career. Not perfect, but at least he's put his neck out on the line for us. Real progressives, white progressives, white Christians, white moderates, white Americans, my white brothers and sisters, I am telling you that it is time for you to put your necks out on the line for someone other than yourselves. Because as Malcolm X said, when white America gets a cold, black people get pneumonia. We're the canary in the coal mine. Our fates are so closely tied to yours that it's frightening to see where we will be if you do not assume your role as the navigators of this ship and the course that this country is on in regard to racial justice and equality. Martin Luther King said that where we go is up to you. He said that in 1966. That is no different today. We're not gonna stop fighting for our lives. It'd be nice to have some help. Thanks for listening, Real Progressive.